So on the Bold Discord server, there's a lot of questions flying around. How do I create lists? How do I add things to the list? How do I use lists? Is there a tutorial on lists? So I thought, hey, why not? Let's sit down and make a tutorial and show some of the basics of how to use lists. And so that's where I'll be going with the next two or three videos. I'm gonna build a very simple project. We're gonna have a few simple objects in our scene that when we click on them, they're gonna add themselves to a list. They'll then turn themselves off. We'll also add a UI element that'll display all the names of the objects that are on that list. And then lastly, we'll create several buttons that will turn those objects back on, whether they are the first object in the list, the last object in the list, maybe a random object in that list, or we'll turn back on all the objects in that list. So let's go ahead and get started with the clickable objects. So if we go over to our scene view, you can see here that the scene is very simple. I have a plane, a cube, a sphere, a directional light, and my camera. That's it, that's what we're gonna start with. So first thing we're gonna do is create a macro so that when we click on the cube or the sphere, some code will run. So I'm gonna go to my macros folder, right click, create flow macro, and I'm gonna call this clickable. Open up my flow graph. Now I'm gonna do things a little bit differently here, and this is not the only way to do this, but I like it because it's nice and simple and easy to implement. I'm gonna add a unit and I'm gonna add the on pointer up event. Now usually this is used for UGUI or GUI events where we can click on a GUI object and this event will then get called. We can use this with scene objects, not just UI objects, but we do have to add one more thing to our scene. I'm gonna go up to my camera, I'm gonna go to add component and I'm gonna add a physics raycaster. This needs to be added to your camera in order for the on point up to get called when you click on scene objects. Now, since I don't have any UI objects at the moment, I also need to add in an event system. So if I go up to create UI and add in event system. Now this will allow this event to get called when I click on those objects that have this flow macro. So let's just test that real quick and see how it's working. So what I'm gonna do is drag out the flow. I'm gonna search for debug log, add a unit, string literal. I'm just gonna simply add clicked and connect that up. Now I'm gonna go up to my cube and my sphere. I'm gonna select both and I'm gonna add in a flow machine. Now I can add the flow machine onto multiple objects, but I can't drag and drop my macro onto multiple objects. So I'm gonna have to do that one at a time. I'm gonna push play and then open up my console so I can see my debug message. Now if I click on my cube, you can see that I get a clicked message in the console. Likewise, if I click on the sphere, I get a second clicked message. You can see the number two there. So we've got our code work and we now have clickable objects. So if that's all you came for, great. I'll see you later. Uh, we now have clickable objects. You can interact with objects on your scene by just clicking on them. We didn't need ray casting or anything particularly fancy. We can use these on pointer up or you could also use the on pointer down events to click on your objects. So we wanna be able to add these objects to a list. Now, just to keep things easy and simple, I'm gonna make that list a scene variable. So I'm gonna come over here to my variables window, click on scene, and I'm going to create a new variable, clicked items, hit the plus, and then I need to choose the type. And I'm gonna type list game object. This is a little slow because there's a lot of different lists that Bolt can pull up. Now this first option is the one I want. List, angle brackets, game object. Now you'll see a bunch of different things here. You may see an I list option in the fuzzy finder or in various types, and those will work. The difference is that I list, not to get too technical here, I list is an interface that the list class implements. You will also see in Bolt, you'll see the AOT list, which I'm gonna skip for this tutorial. AOT lists are types that you need to use if you are building for iOS or WebGL. So I'm gonna add that in, add my type, and you can see here I can add various values to my list if I wanted to add objects before runtime, but I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna leave that as is. I'm gonna go back to my flow macro. I'm gonna delete these debug messages. I'm gonna drag this clicked items list into my flow macro. And so what we're trying to do here is add this game object to a list. So if I right click, add unit, come down here to collections, lists, and add list item. And so what we wanna to add to this list is the object that this flow macro is on. So I'm gonna right click, add unit, and I'm gonna search for self. And I'm gonna connect that up. So let's connect everything up and see how it works. I'm gonna connect up my list and my flow. And let's press play and see what happens. In my variables window, if I click on scene, I can see my clicked items list. And now when I click on a cube, you can see that the cube was added as a value. I can click on the sphere, and the sphere was also added. I've noticed here that the UI here is a little buggy for lists. I'm not gonna worry about that too much. The functionality is all good. If I continue to click on these objects, I'm gonna continue to add them to the list. I'm gonna make the list bigger and bigger. And so I don't wanna continuously add the same cube or the same sphere to the object. So what I wanna do is check if the list 
contains that object already. And if it does, I don't want to add it to the list. If it doesn't contain that object, I do want to add it to that list. So let's go back out of play mode and go back to our macro. So I'm going to disconnect my flow and I'm going to add a couple more units. I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to collections, lists, and we're going to use this unit right here, list contains item. So what this is going to do is check and see, does this list have this item? And it's going to return a Boolean out the right hand side. I'm going to drag up my list and I'm going to move my self node over. Cause what we want to check is, does this list have the game object that this flow macro is on? We're going to take that Boolean up into a branch. And if that's false, we're going to go over here and add ourselves to that list. I'm going to connect up my flow to the branch. And there you go. That's all there is to it. We're now checking to see whether this object is in the list or not. Let's push play and see what happens. Again, in my variables window, I'm going to click on scene so I can see my scene variables. Now, if I click on my cube, you can see that it gets added. But if I click again, you can see that it's not adding it to the list. Whereas if I click on the sphere, the sphere does get added. And again, if I click again, it doesn't get added because it's already in the list. So there you go. We've got clickable objects functioning in our scene. We're also clicking on those objects and adding them to our list. So our next video, we're going to create a UI text element that's going to display all of the names of the objects that are in the list. That's going to use a for each loop to iterate through the list, get the name of each of the game objects and display it in a text box. So I hope that was helpful and I hope you'll join me for my next video with lists in Bolt.